I uh, have never had the gift to be a musician, but I'm so grateful for those who do and share it because that was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Looking forward to hearing the next piece. I will try to hurry through so we can just get to that because I think that's what we're all looking forward to. As has been mentioned, I'm going to be speaking today on the fact that we are heading towards Mother's Day weekend, which is a beautiful celebration. And before I get to that, though, I do want to acknowledge, obviously, this unique time that we are in and start by saying thank you. Thank you to you for however you have helped us during this unprecedented time and helped us to get through this. And that is true that you have been helpful in whatever way you have provided help with this, whether it be by physically distancing yourself, we know that's important, or maybe by providing encouragement or comfort to those who are also facing this right now. Maybe you're a healthcare worker or a grocer or a teacher or, or somebody who is helping others get through this right now. Whatever it is that you are doing, I just want to say thank you. I know that None of us have ever been through something quite like this before. And while there is a lot of sadness that comes with something like this, at the same time, it's amazing to see people of all different lifestyles gather together to unify and overcome something like this. So truly, thank you for what you're doing to help us overcome this. And I know we're all looking forward to a time when this is behind us. And to all of you, of course, I wish you health and peace and wellness and courage, as we all need. Well, it is the week leading up to Mother's Day. And that can mean so many things to so many of us. But the fact is, we get to celebrate. And right now, it feels good, maybe, to celebrate. To celebrate our mothers, our grandmothers, our spiritual mothers, any influential women in our lives. We get to celebrate this weekend, and I'm so thankful for that. Of course, typically we would be offering flowers and tributes to these women at our church services this weekend, but that, of course, will be done virtually, and yet we still can celebrate. But something that has been done at my church on Mother's Day weekend for the past few years is the reading of some beautiful words by the writer Amy Young, who shared these words with a pastor in the hopes of helping him provide comfort and celebration on Mother's Day weekend to his church members. Because we know that the fact is Mother's Day weekend can be hard for some people who maybe don't have their mothers with them anymore or maybe have pain associated with that. And as the body of Christ, we long to make a space and experience for everybody. And I so appreciate these words from Amy Young and always loved them being read at my church. And so I would like to share them with you. It's called A Tribute Prayer for Mother's Day. And I hope you enjoy them. It says, to those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder than it already is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experience pain at the hands of their own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. 
to those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who will, empty, who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who have placed children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child within your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors within our midst. And so we remember you. For me, Mother's Day immediately brings one thing to mind, and that is my relationship with my mother. And I would like to tell you a little bit about her. I am the youngest of four, and all four of us were born at home. Now, I'm not suggesting that to any soon-to-be mothers, but that was a decision my mother made during the 1980s. She was going to have her kids at home, and, and that is how I made my arrival as well. Shortly after I was born, my parents separated, and that meant my mother would now be a single mother of four young ones, one daughter and three sons, the youngest of which wanted to do what you would expect, wreak havoc, run around, play games, climb on things I had no business climbing on, making anything I could into a sport, and basically needing to be entertained. And yet, my mother always found ways to be there for me, to make sure that I felt fully cared for, to always make sure my passion bucket was completely full, to be there for me in every way. I think of one game that we like to play. Well, I like to play. It was called quarterback sack. I loved football as a kid, and you may know that in football, the defender who chases after the quarterback, the one who usually has the ball, if they are able to tackle them, it's called a quarterback sack. And as a little boy, if I saw my mother walking around the house, I decided it'd be fun to shout out as loud as I could, quarterback sack, chase after my mother, who would then play along and run away from me as she yelled, and then jump on her leg and try to tackle her to the ground, usually ending up in laughter. I loved this game, quarterback sack. But then one day my mother sat me down and she told me, Aaron, we can't play the quarterback sack game anymore. I said, why, Mom? And she said, it's, it's not because I don't love those moments with you, because I do. And of course, it's not because I don't love you, because, oh, I do. It's just, well, you're 30 years old now, and I'm worried that you might hurt me. It took a while for me to get over that one, but eventually I have. And yet, I've always known that my mother was there for me. My father may have not been able to be in my life past the first few years, but my mom was my mom and my dad. I like to say that she got a doctorate in daddyship, and I'm so grateful for her. And during my upbringing with my siblings, but especially my mom, I had several experiences that really taught me some valuable lifelong lessons. And I'd like to share some of those with you today. The first one that comes to mind is when, again, I was very young, and one of my older siblings said, hey, I've got a great idea. Let's go camping. Well, we said, well, sure, we can talk to mom. They said, no, 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 we're not gonna talk to mom. We're gonna go camping in our backyard. Get the tent get the sleeping bags, get the pillows. We're camping in the backyard tonight. Well, I was only about four years old, and so I was just going to go with whatever they said, and I said, yeah, sounds fun. Secretly a, a bit terrified. But our mom, once she kind of found out what was going on, she allowed it, and the four of us 
slept out in the backyard. But during the middle of the night, I woke up and I looked out in front of our tent and I noticed something looking back at me. It had this shadowy outline to it. And while I couldn't see it clearly, I think I knew what it was. What was looking back at me was a big, scary snake. I started to tremble. I, I started to cry out. I started to wail for my siblings. But they were just sound asleep. I felt I was going to be attacked at any moment, and so I started to cry louder, help, somebody help, to no avail. And just when I knew my fate had been sealed, I heard another sound. Aaron? It was the sweet voice of my mother, who had heard her youngest crying out and was there to take care of him. But she was about to walk into the path of this snake, and so I cried out, Mom, no! And she said, what? And she turned on the back porch light, which lit up our backyard, and there I saw it. But it wasn't a snake. Unfortunately, it was a shoe. She said, what is it? I said, nothing. <laughs> she said, do you want to sleep inside the rest of the night? I said, yeah. And from that moment on, I, I never doubted that even when I thought she wasn't there, my mother was always watching over me. As I grew a little bit older, I would beg my brothers to play baseball with me in the yard. And typically, they would oblige. We would throw the ball, play catch, hit it around, so much fun. And yet, we ran into trouble because more often than you would think, we found a way to break a window. I don't know how we were so good at it. It almost became a talent. But inadvertently, whether it was an errant throw or a, a hit that went a little too far or sideways or a thrown bat, we would break a window. And every time, of course, horror would run through us as we realized we had done something really bad that would be really expensive. And then we would begin arguing over who was going to tell mom, no, you're gonna tell, it was your fault, my fault, it wasn't my fault. No, you do it, you're the oldest. Well, you're the youngest and you better do it. We would try to figure it out, but more often than not, before we could even get our made up excuse out, our mother, who had heard the shattered glass, would simply say, don't worry. I'll call the repairman, keep playing outside. And I very quickly learned the beauty of forgiveness and grace. And one more experience. As a teenager, I, like most teenagers, was very self-conscious. That just comes with the territory. And so when I was approaching my birthday, I remember one year telling my mother in no uncertain terms, I did not want a birthday party. I did not want her coordinating things with my friends. I didn't want her talking to my friends. I didn't need some big birthday party. We could just have a cake at home with the family. That was good enough. She said she understood. And yet that week, I was on the phone with my friend, and my mother poked her head in the room and said, when you're done, give me the phone. I need to talk with him, but you need to leave. Obviously, I could see right through this. I said, Mom, I, I don't want a birthday party. Do you understand? Just, yes, I get it. Don't worry. I just need to talk to him when you're done. Well, a few days later, it was my birthday. And a few days later, my friends surprised me with a birthday party. And if I'm honest, I had a lot of fun that day. But when I talked to my mom about it, I, I said, I told you I didn't want a birthday party. She said, I know. That's why I surprised you. <laughs> but I realized that party wasn't about me. That party was about her wanting to celebrate a milestone day in the life of her son. That party was about her expressing her deep love for me. And I'm grateful for that. 
And now as an adult, when I reflect and I think back, I realize that I learned so many lessons from my mom that I carry with me to this day. Lessons about her overwhelming love for me. Lessons about the beauty of forgiveness. Lessons about her constant watchful presence. And I realize that the greatest living example of Jesus in my life has been my mother. And I find this interesting because the Bible chooses to use parental terms to describe God to us. And of course, most of the time, it's in a fatherly context, and we're grateful for that. But the Bible also references God's beautiful motherly qualities in many places, and I think we can celebrate that as well. And I'd like to share just a few of these beautiful texts. Deuteronomy tells us of the God who birthed us in Deuteronomy 32, when it says, you were unmindful of the rock that bore you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. Isaiah 66 tells us about God as a comforting mother. It says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Psalm 131, verse 2, has David compare the calming that he receives from God to the same that a child receives from its mother? He writes, I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. In the New Testament, Luke chapter 15, a a chapter we know well, Jesus giving some of his most well-known parables, it's there that he talks about God being like a woman searching for us. He says, or a woman who has 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does she not light a lamp? Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. I love that parable. And one more in Matthew chapter 23 and Luke chapter 13, Jesus compares himself to a mother hen. He says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. Hmm. The loving, protective, nurturing nature of God. That is who I have seen God to be in my life. And I hope in yours as well. And so I ask you, what have you learned about God from some of the influential women in your life? Do you have any stories or experiences like I've shared? And maybe those are things we can think about this Mother's Day. And if there are any women in your life who have helped you see God and experience God in new ways, maybe you can share that with them. I'm sure they would appreciate it. I'd like to finish by sharing one more experience that I've had. This one also took place when I was in high school. It was a cold winter morning. And I was beginning to get ready for school when my mother came into my room to tell me that she needed my help with something. She looked a bit concerned. And she led me to the front of the house and had me look outside the window. And I remember the rain was rushing down, smacking the asphalt. The wind was blowing incredibly hard. It was quite, you could say, an ugly morning. But what she wanted to show me wasn't the weather. It was that in the midst of that downpour, on our street was a woman standing there being pelted by the rain, wearing only a thin dress, and she was barefoot. And it also looked as if her head was hung low and she was weeping. Of 
course, there were so many questions running through our heads. Why was she here? Why was she crying? Why was she barefoot? What is going on here? And we stared, and certainly our, our hearts were hurting for this woman. But I had to get ready for school. So thanks for showing me, Mom. But my mom had already decided that we were going to help this person. She told me that she was going to go outside and that I should grab a blanket. She walked outside in the rain, and instead of grabbing the blanket, I just watched as well as she went out into the street and put her arm around this stranger, said some words to her that, of course, I couldn't hear, but the woman softly nodded. And then my mom began to lead her towards our front door. I quickly ran and grabbed the blanket. My mother and the woman walked in. I handed it to my mom, who, who sat the woman down and wrapped her shivering body in that blanket. And then I observed as my mom began to comfort her. And then my mom asked, do you need us to call the police? The woman sharply responded, no, no. My mom said, okay. And then I figured she was going to ask more questions. Let's get the story. Let's find out what's going on here. But my mom didn't ask any more questions. As soon as she knew that woman was not in danger, she didn't feel the need to pry. She just wanted to make sure that she was okay. And so then my mother said, do you need us to take you home? You're welcome to stay. We can feed you. We can make you a hot drink or you can lie down, but I don't want to keep you here if you don't want to be. Do you need us to take you home? The woman said, please. And so then my mom asked me to warm up the car as she led the woman into the back seat. And the woman directed us as I drove home, which was actually really exciting for me because I didn't have my license yet. <laughs> so I was enjoying this. But as I was behind the wheel, I was listening as I heard my mom continue again and again to care for that woman, to hold her, to encourage her. And then I heard my mom share that when she is having a challenging time, she prays to God for strength. Well, soon enough, the woman told us that we had arrived just to pull over. We didn't go all the way to the house. We just stopped at the corner of a street. And before she got out, I, I said, can I pray? And I prayed in that moment that God would be so close to our new friend, that God would provide healing from any hurtful things that may have been done to her, and that God's love would be so close to her moving forward. We said goodbye, and then we drove away. And of course, we've never seen that woman again. But I will share with you that that moment stands out to me in my life as when my mother truly showed me who Jesus is. And for the length of that drive, it didn't seem like it was my mother in the back seat. It was this woman with Jesus. And I am grateful that I learned that lesson. I want to wish you all a very happy Mother's Day. I want to encourage you to think of the influential women in your life, those who have helped you see God in new ways, and let them know that you appreciate them. And I also want to encourage you to be grateful to God, who has so many wonderful motherly qualities. And I wish you all God's greatest blessing now and forevermore. God bless you. Lord, thank you so much for who you are. 
time and time again. We get to learn new things about you. And I think back to experiences I've had in my life that showed me more and more of your qualities. And frankly, so many of them are lessons I learned from my mother. Thank you, Lord, for our mothers. Thank you for our grandmothers. Thank you for our aunts, our sisters, our wives. Thank you for our spiritual mothers. Thank you for our mentors. And I pray that no matter the significance of Mother's Day to us, that this will be a weekend where we can cherish the women who have impacted our lives and also cherish some of your most beautiful qualities. Thank you, God, for loving us, protecting us, and nurturing us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.